one more might turn them off. There we go. All right, this is the underhold. One of the things we're doing right now is just trying to get some more videos going. So we're doing a couple of videos at once. Yeah, run changing shirts, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, we just, this is what we wear. Yeah, the, the underhold, they'll find out like, hey, I bet they filmed these at once. Ooh, and that's the secret. Yeah. Uh, it's not as good as in the Max Castles, but. So we were discussing stuff that we maybe saw lately. Uh, Robert just saw the Green Inferno. Yeah, I finally saw it. I wanted to keep, I just been wanting to see it for a while, but uh, I got kids. Yeah. So I'm like, am I gonna watch this awesome cannibal movie in front of these kids? I'm trying to get to eat food like they're yeah. gonna. Eat we're not gonna be able to watch all the same movies all the time. So some of these will be like discussions where one person's seen it, the other person hasn't. Mm. But we're gonna play with this format over time. Yeah, I'm probably gonna watch stuff you might not yeah. even like sometimes, and vice versa. But we'll uh, definitely watch some of the, the things you want us to watch out there. So try to sell the audience too much, yeah. man. I have seen The Green Inferno, but I saw it years ago. I saw it, like, probably the weekend it came out. Uh, so that was a while ago. And so did you get to see it in the theater? I did. Nice. Yeah, I saw it at uh, Fox Tower 10, downtown Portland. Uh, it's a small little theater. I, I, I don't even know if anybody was else in the theater. Dude, I helped the theater. build I the was... Fox Tower. <laughs> no, 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 I helped build Pioneer. And then I didn't get to work there. That's <laughs> really upset. So I was just there by myself. Oh, by myself, I think. I don't think there was anybody else in the audience. No, oh, uh, nice. Yeah. So yeah, I wanted to all. see people leave in anger, but I didn't get to see that, unfortunately. Yeah, people didn't even want to buy a ticket and protest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Which I could understand after watching myself. I'm trying to think what somebody came out of recently. Somebody did leave a movie recently and think it was garbage. That's a good was, answer. It was, for... was it Men in Black? or? I could see it. I heard some... What was the other about Shaft? Yeah, maybe it was Man of Black. Which, by the way, it's bad, but it's not as bad as the other ones. So take that for it. I don't like it. I haven't seen the Shaft. <laughs> it's already gone, right? I haven't seen the Shaft. No, uh, no, it just came out. It's this weekend. Like, but in your memory so far from being there, uh, what movie has had the most walkouts or most returns? Really, nothing. People nothing don't really. Memorable. No, nobody really leaves the theater much anymore. Punch Drunk Love to me to this day. Oh, wow. I've never worked during the movie that had the most walkouts, but every showing we had multiple people that well, We have a policy now of like when the movie starts, you can't get a refund anymore. Yeah, Period. it's right when it starts. Because yeah. it used to be. Right uh, when the previews start. I think it used to be 10 minutes. And I was thinking about this. I wonder if it's to prevent uh, employee theft, actually. Can't do a refund after the movies have started. I don't know. Like them returning the tickets. Stuff that could something. be a Cinemark thing. I don't know if Regal's... Because there's, there's emergency tickets at R Regal still, as far as I know. Like, we can still give up. Wrong. We could possibly give them a guest pass if they put up a stink about it. Next to me, it's like, if there's shit the that... You're, like, I've been forced to leave the theater because of an emergency. Yeah. I We always gave those out at Regal. We'll give out the gift passes. And we gave no, out refunds if it was within the first 20 minutes, I think it was. It was, it was I think, play, like, before the, the second reel starts. You know, so it's like you're obviously yeah. been watching the movie. You, you're like, fuck this movie, I'm out. You're right? Yeah. And honestly, we didn't give a fuck because it was about the concessions. <laughs> We're not returning your, pop yeah. your popcorn. I know. You really. got your popcorn money? Fuck Hollywood. That, see, that could be part of it, too, is since the ticket sale could goes be contract to Hollywood. From the and that companies. would mean we would have to pay you to leave a film. Because I bet you the movie company doesn't want to give the money back. So yeah, they're bet, probably forcing it's... us to pay for it if, if we give a refund. I think that yeah. could be it, too. And Cinemark, well, you're the third biggest chain at this point, number three, is you got AMC is number one, you got Regal Cinema is number two, Re Regal slash Universal. Oh, really? They're on Regal yeah. Universal? That's cool. And it, as far as I know... Oh, by the way, Sidebar. <laughs> no. Yeah, Sidebar. The Green Inferno. Let's get back to that tree. No, 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 no. So it wasn't bad, bad. I liked some of the, I liked special effects. I think the movie overall had, a, had some... It was linear, at least. You could follow yeah. it. Which didn't bore me, and that's the thing I can really get check out in films. But to quote Joe Bob Briggs, you have a horror movie, you should have that percentage of horror and comedy. Uh -huh. And this had just a little bit more comedy and more huh moments in it than the horror. And I think those clashed too much for me. Okay. Um, so like the overall story is you get uh, some college kids. They're your typical, I don't want to say like uh, 
caricatures of liberal college kids, but these were like, we're going to save the rainforests, and that's exactly what like, it showed, it showed like, they go to save the rainforest. Uh, it had liberal douchebags too, which was great. Yeah, and so it showed that wasn't one the, of like, these the guys was guy, a like a complete asshat. Yeah, so the, the complete guy who's this... I haven't seen it for years. So I don't yeah, he's this over. guitar playing, like, yeah. come love the forest if you don't want to s- help save these people, man, you're not a believer, blah... You know, he turns out to be like a dude, like not just a douchebag, but like a scumbag. Okay. Yeah. Right? Like this dude, like, like he was, yeah, we get paid by the PR company to come take this Make sure videos. this is recording still. Yep. Okay. It sucks to talk a bunch thinking you're recorded and you're not. So he's basically this like douchebag is being paid by the PR company, some PR company. And this is all just going to look good for like three days. And then this uh, development company is still going to come in with mercenaries and just shoot all these uh, natives that live in a uh, section, an unknown section of Peru, you know, an uncharted area in Peru. And <laughs> they want to go stop this from happening. That's why they've they've conned this group of like basically save the rainforest liberal yeah. archetypes. And this archetypes. is this is like a modern take on. What was the original one called? Something. Well, see, that's what I thought. Kind of, I thought it was like Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust. Kind of, not in. a remake. Yeah. But just kind of a modern take of sorts. Yeah, in a way, like that. I, that's what I thought going into was that it was going to be like Cannibal Holocaust. Which one of the big twists in that movie was that the filmmakers are actually the monsters. Yeah. And that. And while there's some of the, the leader of the, liberal rainforest saviors, yeah. is like a kind of a gross monster, it still has its her- hero. Or its hero in the main character who is who does believe in saving the people and their mm-hmm. their way of life, even though I guess she doesn't. Even though all the shit had bad happens to her, she still I get, believes that they should have their way of life. If I'm to believe the ending, which is the ending confused me, and I'll get to that. But so like so they the group goes to Peru. Mm-hmm. They're almost immediately beset on by this like really bizarre, obviously scummy rich dude. That's paying for the whole travel. Yeah. All right. They even under their breath, like whisper, hey, 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 pointing at the main character, who we learn earlier in the movie, her father is a um, lawyer for the United Nations, and so because of this, this other character is like kind of poorly nice, like oh, oh, all, all shucks, nice guy, invites her to the group. Right, and we learn later it's because her dad's the lawyer. She's the obvious bait because if they kill the fu- if these uh, developers who the group is trying to stop kills her while they're recording on their phones and live streaming, so we get that modern aspect at least that they're using their phones as their weapons. Uh, that the United Nations is going to get all involved, and that so they don't fuck with her. But she learns, oh, I was only invited on this because I'm bait. Mm-hmm. So even the nice guy in the show turns out to be he was a scum scummy guy too, kind of knowing. Now I have that's why they brought her in about uh, Eli Roth's writing, that it's very much like a bunch of uncomplicated characters just kind of doing what naturally comes next, uh, like going with the flow. Kind, kind of. of, kind of like uh, Cabin Fever just being like this is what the characters are. This is the virus being introduced to the characters. This is just what's happening next. And yeah, they were they were complete the archie type characters. You yeah. had the stoner, the and love hostile. Interest. I feel like that way too. These characters you know. just act a certain way, and you know a lot of people that are just doing their job, or you have the asshole doctor that's going there for fun, and they're just acting the way they generally would act. They're not complicated characters. They're very simplistic, but they're just doing their next action that would seem yeah. right in that environment. And there's not like necessarily a with character arc too. so much in Eli Roth films. Um, there's not much of a like this is crescendoing to a finale even in, in some aspects. Yeah, like I, there's no character arc like you were saying. I uh, there's a grayness to everyone. There's, and you can say that's not a good bad, bad filmmaking. I find yeah. it fascinating. I actually kind of like the style. It is different. I don't think it's filmmaking so much as it could be acting choices or character choices, like writing yeah. choices yeah. in filmmaking. Um, I think he pulls it off because human beings are, in reality, they're great neutral characters. There, there you know, is a reality I mean, they're to not me always in that good, and they're yeah. not always bad. And in reality, they're not always the archetype. And if, yeah. if that's part of his writing, to sh- I could see that being the fast. Like I don't feel like The Rock would feel right for any of his films or something. No, because he looks, he looks like he's a good guy. I mean, or Bruce Willis. Willis. <laughs> yeah, Bruce Willis could be one of the doctors on vacation. <laughs> well, he was in, he was in. Uh, 
Death Wish. Death that Wish. was an Eli Roth film. Yeah, oh my god. That was back to the formula. That movie was all comedy. And it lost any kind of social relevance because of that. The original Death Wish was based on crimes that were happening in the New York subway system at the time. And so it, re it resonated with the people. Yeah. Uh, and, and New York was overrun with crime. We don't have crime like that, where you need street vigilantes gunning cats down. We just don't live in that world. I would try just that that we have that cops that was gun a, us down. A big that. argument over everything of Bruce Willis wanting to seem heroic and Eli Roth just being like, no, you just hate these people. You need to kill them and gun them down and be a ruthless maniac. Yeah, and he's like, well, can we put some jokes in? I think that ruined the movie. Mm -hmm. I, Let me make smile If more. you look at Eli Roth's other stuff up until then, it doesn't quite yeah. fit. It's definitely there's a it's a more a, a morality tale without a good or bad side. Yeah. The villagers aren't evil. They're yeah. doing literally their what they do as villagers. Yeah, and it's a it's, ritual. Yeah, it's the people love it. You could see that the, yeah. even the children it's a way of life. So it's not evil to them. Yeah. Um, it's and there's scenes where it's it's really actually beautiful watching some of the elders mm -hmm. teach the youngsters like this is how you play a Tattoos off a bitch, you know. <laughs> and I think that's great. It was, and they say in this very, you know, teacherly way. It's very kind. And you're like, oh, okay. But we as the audience, the horror is like, she's <laughs> just a too matter of fact. This tattooed bitch, yeah. right? And uh, so they're not really evil. The mer mercenaries, by definition, aren't evil. They're mercenaries. Yeah. And the bad guy even says, these mercenaries we just saw today, they'll be right back there tomorrow. The same ones we saw. And that's a plot point. Because yeah. it is the same mercenary that stops at the beginning that she has to convince Bluff with a broken phone later, mm -hmm. spoiler alert, so that she gets away. Um, but, so like, the, that whole grayness, we've determined that the good, or, the good two shoe people that come down, they all have agendas. There's the one girl only came, one girl comes because her girlfriend came. Yeah. The girlfriend came just because she wants to experience travel and shit like that. Yeah. And so we got those two characters. She got the other character who wants to go find... She wants a better Tinder pro profile. Yeah, she wanted to, they, went for, <laughs> they went for their pictures. You have the third, the stoner character, the generic yeah. stoner character, uh, who I noticed was like, is that Junie from Spy Kids? And it was Junie from Spy Kids. Oh, she okay. was. Yeah. And he goes just because he wants to find the, the hardest weed in Peru. So it's the most generic character dumb thing. Yeah. Right? So that's what he's the doing. stoner. Right? So... They all have their selfish agendas. Uh, the the cutesy kind of ho hum guy that convinces our main character to come. You get the idea that maybe he likes her. Maybe he was gonna be balls up to ask her out at some point, but that don't happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then finally, you have the main character who's we determined is a real douche. They're like not even just a real like he's a scumbag. Not just a Im, like no morals, but amoral. Mm -hmm. he, is, he turns out he is kind of the villain of the story if there was one and his love interest is immediately like shoving the main character don't even look at my boyfriend so we don't like her because she's there just to and she also whispering with the boyfriend so yeah. we know she's in on the what turns out later to be just a PR scam right then there's when they're Plane crashes. Half of them, the, the uninteresting characters, they die. They have we don't. They're the good ones. The yeah. good ones all die in the plane crash as they're supposed to, right? All we got left are these losers. Man, right? could you imagine if Eli Roth did something like the Green Mile? <laughs> well, like, in the Green get, Mile, the black guy get, doesn't die first. Well, you but actually he does get in the heavily, Green Inferno. Heavily invested in one of these characters, like <sighs> loving them, like a Stephen King novel character. Oh. And, then, and then Eli Roth being a sadistic which one was fucker I, at the end. There was one I read not too long ago, which it did a really good job of building up a, a a character that is just gunned down in the for no reason in the book. But Stephen King does that a lot. He wants you to fall in love with the character, and then yeah. you go, he just and then in the, the movie version they won't show the gangbang. Yes, every time. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, that's a side note. Just I think you know what you did. Imagine Hostel if you cared about the characters or something. <laughs> You might care. It's like you, you have to go into hostel going, is that the guy from my soap opera? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Is this the you first movie? You have to be movie? tied to that actor yeah. emotionally. I like him from that other bad movie from yeah. MTV Films. Because he was a swimmer. It's bad enough seeing these people, you know, getting filleted and, you know, tortured and I stuff. I didn't even feel it was bad. Yeah. Like, they start off right away and they're like, oh, we're going to eat the black guy. And I'm like, is it because the black guy always has to die in the movies first or is it because he's the fat guy? So they kill the black dude first, these cannibals. They go right up, pop his eyes out, 
saw his legs and shit off. It's a gruesome but funny. It's it's not super funny, but it's graphic, and it lets all the other trapped do-gooders know what's about to happen to him. <laughs> Later, which is where the movie really at first, I'm like, okay, I can buy into this. There's some. It sucks. It's scary. Like this is a situation because he's happening. Now you got the dude who's uh, like his love interest. They strip. Dumb check her with arrows as soon as she shows up. She's like, how's it going? Whap! Right in the chest, right? And then like, can we save her? Bah! Right between the eyes, big-ass arrow, right? It has the worst special effects, too, where you know that it was just a clip and they glued oh, the yeah. arrow to her head and because it's just the way it happens, you're like, whoa. But, so she's out. Right? Now, one thing I remember is... She turns her boyfriend into a maniac, okay. right? So later in the movie, not too much later, like, they, there's an escape plan. Mm -hmm. And the tattooed chick who's brought her girlfriend, who's all like, oh, I'll do anything for you. She's like, I'm gonna, I'm a good runner. I'm gonna run the fuck out of here and get one of them bullets and we'll get out of here. I'll get back to... All right, so she gets out for because the, they distract the people. They have a phone with them. Mm -hmm. They turn on the alarm, toss in the bushes. Mm -hmm. The sentry looks over, rah, jumps down after this phone. Mm -hmm. And then they run out of the cage, or the, the runner chick with the tattoos runs out of the cave, or the cage. Gets the boats. It all goes black when she gets the boats. We're assuming maybe she's safe. The next scene, they're like, we're all going to get the fuck out of here. We just got to eat and get our energy up. So let's eat this weird paste that they bring us. What is it? That's the same shit they're feeding pigs over there. It's just pig paste. All right. So the chick's eating out of the bowl. And they're like, my girlfriend is missing. And then she gets to the bottom of it. She sees that the bowl's got like little pieces of tattooed flesh <laughs> from her girlfriend. It's her girlfriend's tattoo. She's what? And then she looks over and all the little kids are playing dress up with the tattoos like putting them on her. <laughs> Look at me! I got a bitch of tattoo on my tummy! And like little three-year-olds like <laughs> And so she's like Fah! smashes the bowl and like throat jabs herself and just kills herself right away. Which causes the main guy the guitar strummer guy so he starts jerking off. That's what I remember. I remember there was something right. like they're just like fucking whatever like, I'm stuck in here. <laughs> and they're looking at him I'm like what the He's like, I, I, you just gotta do it, man. You're gonna go. And I'm like, what? His excuse doesn't make sense. You just gotta do it because you got it? What? what? Well, what obviously, seeing that? her get her throat slashed gave him that. <clears throat> and he yeah. had to fucking spoon. But it was kind of thinking, like, I guess it was supposed to just portray, like, since you're stuck in there, it just do whatever just, you're gonna just, do. Just get to prove, like, because that. you're just gonna have to shit in front of everybody. Which causes yeah. the only other yeah. good guy, the weird yeah. Swedish guy, he's like, I'm gonna kill you. Don't go over to choke this guy out. Why he's still masturbating? He doesn't even yeah. try to stop. He's like, yeah, why he's still masturbating? And the villagers like, nah. Put the sticks in, like, let him masturbate, bro. <laughs> and push him off. And then, like, yeah. And then they still don't pick the weirdo, so he's obviously right. Yeah. Masturbating was something we would dear himself to the other, the rest of the creeps. Who are all painted like red and yellow and stuff, so they look awesome and creepy. So they decide, all right, we gotta figure out another way. The other chick, she just killed herself? Quick, before they come and take her body out and cook it, let's <laughs> shove the super weed, which is about a, an eighth of super weed, <laughs> into her corpse mouth. Mm -hmm. And then they go and smoke her like a pig, the villagers, like, ah! and her weed infested corpse billows out so much weed smoke that the entire village gets so high yeah that's that they very become they get the munchies they yeah. start acting like cartoon high characters grabbing it her in the air and they get the munchies to such an extent that they don't even they're, they're so high they're not paying attention allowing yeah three people to escape out of the cage so as they're escaping out of the cage dickhead who's jacking off a minute ago he pulls down junie from spy kids like nah I just gotta be faster than Junie from Spy Kids. Because they if I'm the only one left, they're gonna eat me. This way there's a fifty fifty chance. They're like, you piece of shit. Right? But they like straight heroin jab Junie up so with whatever <laughs> you savage blow darts are using. Mm -hmm. uh, what would it be filled with? It's Peru. Mm -hmm. So we gotta look that up. Frogs. I'm, I'm guessing like frogs. frogs. So I quack. So Junie wakes up and then all these super stone kids are around him. And they're all like, hey, 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 let's eat him raw and alive. I'm like, cannibal movie. The cannibals know you gotta cook humans. Yeah. How, what did we learn in school? How, how many miles of intestine do you have? 30 feet. And feet. you learned from your surgery. Yes. That there are 36 chairs <laughs> of dookie of that. If you well, when I, when I had a colonoscopy from my uh, appendec appendectomy, yeah, uh, they had to put 
uh, a tube in me and fill it up with you know, the, the salty Kool-Aid juice that they can see in the x-ray. Uh, it's colored, I think, though. Mm. Uh, I think it radiates. I don't know. But they can see it when they image it. Like MRI uh, juice. Yeah. So, but I had so much blockages. They need to fill up the intestines, so if you have a blockage being poop, they got to push the, the, poop into the next nozzle chamber. into the next chamber, fill up that chamber, keep going, fill in the other chamber. And so I was joking that maybe there was 36 chambers and I am like a honorary Wu-Tang member or something. <laughs> Yeah, so old dirty intestines. Yeah. <laughs> the thirty-six chamber of Shaolin. Yeah, <laughs> the appendectomy. Okay, so. which actually I'm gonna go back on this a second. So after I had some imaging, I remember being back in the the room, and my doctor came in and was like, "Okay, we need you on your side. I'm gonna you know put on the glove and and then he's, he's like, like That's my dick. Uh, we need to." you know, check, uh, you know, your colon, whatever, uh, and so he sticks his finger in my butt, and then he pulls it out, and he's like, we think your appendix burst, <laughs> you know, that's when he reveals that, so I'm like, how, how do you, how do you tell to run that, did he just want to do that, because I think he got it from the imaging, Yeah, he could have told me before he stuck his finger in my ass. he's like looking at the books, huh, gloves please, <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, I think your appendix burst. <laughs> Isn't that over here? Oh no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> you would think so. <laughs> we could feel it through the. Maybe it's like how if you. Uh... You know, it's like it's like they put on the gloves, they put the finger in your ass, and you go, "You just got to prove for your college loan." And you're like, "What does this have to do with anything?" <laughs> yeah, I've heard it works for a lot of people throughout life. <laughs> yeah. getting, getting a lot of loans that way. <laughs> so this super weed makes the whole village so high they eat Junie alive. Guts, bowel guts, and all the kids. So. Fuck those kids. They are all missing school tomorrow. Mm -hmm. right? So now that allows the main character to leave. Now, they were prepping her for some kind of ritual. Mm -hmm. Because right when they first captured him, the, the witch doctor, shaman ruler of the village, who was all yellow and had like one eye and all this cool like Cardassian from Star Trek shit going on. Or, or Bajoran oh, yeah, yeah. jewelry. She rolls up with this like bone hook. And straight Aziz and Sari fish hooks all three of these <laughs> chicks, right? And she's like, "Nah, you're a whore. Man, you've had sex. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, and then as soon as she busts a hymen on the main character, we learn, oh, not only is your dad a U.S. senator, you've never even had sex, and you're in college. How did you get a green card? Or the, <laughs> yeah. the thing you need to leave, the visa, right? How yeah. do you do the passport? I don't know. So they use this bone on her and break her hymen. Like, oh, she's getting special stuff. And it looked like at one point they were binding her up to give her the, um, to, to give her a female on, like, genital the, mutilation. The tropes surgery. of like virgin sacrifice. Yeah. But like some of the binding was like about uh, genital mutilation. Oh, yeah. And that was kind of what keyed off the character in the first place mm -hmm. when her teacher at school mentioned that this tribe did that. And she's like, well, that's barbaric. And like, well, yeah. some women think you got to do that so that the, your men don't run around with all the other men in the village. Or, I mean, women in the village. So they just make it a baby make it thing. I don't know. I think it's weird. Yeah. But I did circumcise my son, so I'm one of the I'm one of the mutilators. <laughs> you know? Oh, this Sorry. is going to be a tilted video, huh? That's all right. We were just as crooked. Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. <laughs> It'll be one of those, it's probably slowly doing that, so the audience is like, what the fuck? It'll make it funny. That's the underhold. <laughs> that's the underhold. So yeah, she eventually escapes the main character. After they get these cool ants to like eat the other dude alive, the mm -hmm. Swede. I don't know. The movie was weird. It was disjointed. I expected more cannibalism, actually. The, yeah. the mutilation in the beginning with the black guy was really the bulk of it. The chick who's like, ugh. They burned her off scene, and then we just see a yellow paste. Man, I can fill up a bowl full of mayonnaise and mustard and be like, here you go, you're eating your buddy. The main thing I remember is just some jokes about people being douchebags. Uh, pretty much almost, yeah. most of the characters being an asshole in some way. Uh, and then just trying to get a the good... The weed to made it take a side turn. Yeah, some, some gore. They, they wanted some, you to, to flinch from some of the gore. Uh, that was pretty good, but... Uh, yeah, like an eye-popping scene with a yeah. knife here and there. Within the movie, like I said, it takes that weird turn once the the super weed makes the whole village high. Mm -hmm. 
But then, at the end of the film, there's an end credits scene like it's a comic book movie. Yeah. There's a weird, like, mysterious phone call mm -hmm. from the creep's sister, and she's got these satellite images that show the creep is still alive. Yeah, I kind of remember that, too. I didn't get that. Does that like, mean was that he's supposed to be a, a... Is there supposed to be a sequel? Is it supposed That's to... what I'm getting. They're going, Green Inferno 2, Electric Boogaloo. You know, are they going to go back after the guy? And was it going to connect with the, the ho ho Hostel movies? Was it going to be like Eli Ross Hostelverse? <laughs> the Hostelverse. <laughs> That's awesome. Hostelverse. Eli Roth. Here's another thing I don't get. Are you going to do the that? The Cabin of Fever movies. remake was filmed here in Oregon. We're in Oregon, by the way, for stalkers. Uh, I, have, I have a customer who comes into my work. He wears a Cabin Fever hat from that remake. He says it was literally just a cash grab. Uh, they tried to advertise it as a good thing they used the same script to just refilm the movie. Which is kind of a cool idea. I actually do like that of using the same old mm -hmm. script, refilming it for new. But if you look at the new That's version the of the movie, there's just no thought into it. It is, literally looks like let's Did just film this as cheap as possible. Maybe? I think I think it was a cash grab. I think it was they figured they could re-release a new one as a remake, use the mm -hmm. same script without paying anything more, and just throw be. it out there. Like we I think the that's what they did. Why pay someone to rewrite it? Uh, they just didn't want to pay for a new script and figured they could make money re rebooting the franchise with the same script. Uh, it is a very uninspired remake, unfortunately. Didn't the first one have the kid from Boy vs. World, Boy Eats World? Or? Yeah. Yeah. He, it was great. Yeah, I, I love, love Cat Fever. Yeah, I uh, just remember the scene where she's like scratched her butt or whatever. But I want, to see, I want to see Exorcist 3 or 4 has a similar story where... There's the same script for okay, two I movies, exactly. I and one came, okay. out, one came out as The Exorcist, one came out as something else, but yeah. it uses the same script, but they're totally different movies, which is very so fascinating. the director in the movie, mm -hmm. had he turned in his first film, mm -hmm. and that's Exorcist Dominion. Okay. Right? Is that four or three? Uh, it's four. Four, okay. So they turned in that, and it's drastically different than what comes out. So the studio didn't like it, the studio wanted the more of the paint by numbers horror movie mm -hmm. and the original was really trying to play into that religious angles of the first one was trying to make more of a psychological mm -hmm. horror movie because um, a lot of people discount Exorcist 3 mm -hmm. from the see the you're even sure which one it was yeah was. and Exorcist 3 is probably one of the scariest psychologically like freaky I horror can't remember movies the of all time. Of, of 3 That's right? George C. Scott's in it yeah. it's amazing it's there it's it still holds up and he perf gives a performance in it that's just great and it's not just about the chick shooting her head around or a, or a possession, but like all of these other things that go into the psychology of like basically his character investigating this stuff. Because in the for in that movie, at least uh, Karis is his friend. Mm -hmm. In Dominion, it, it's kind of like the origin story. Mm -hmm. So it's Doc. It's um, Father Marin. Yeah, is the guy, and so he's. Peter Sarsgaard, or the other one, one of the Sarsgaards, the guy from, who was Loki in one of the movies for a minute, right? the guy who was like the badass, I, I string up Daniel Craig, you know, the girl with the dragon tattoo, <laughs> but he's in a movie, I'm either, he or the bad guy, or the creepy yeah. uncle, you're one of the two, so, I'm totally losing my train of thought here. By the way, this is something that's going to be a normal thing in the videos, if we yeah, go on side trip. tangents, this is a good thing. This is the underworld. This is why you're going to want to watch stuff uh, having to do with movies that you give two shits about, because yeah. there's going to be side stuff like this. So Rennie Harlan, that fucking hack, <laughs> he redid the, the Exorcist and turned it into Exorcist the beginning. Oh, that was a Rennie Harlan. Oh, my God. He's the hack that warps it, but the, the beginning is, the first one is is badass. So just like saying, they ended up... Do they both get released as an Exorcist film? Eventually. Okay. But the one that was theatrically released first was the Rennie Harlan okay. dumpster fire. And you can look at it and go, ah, what's going on in this movie? It just, it doesn't, it's not that scary. Um, From the, the band villain, you Deep Blue Sea. It's just like any Rennie Harlan movie where the, basically the female love interest turns out to be the bad guy. Sorry, Gina Davis. The, the woman he is banging or and or wants to bang. Yeah. Like, she's a bad guy after all. My God, never one of your films, you creep boy. He's probably got 900 Me Too's that we don't know about. <laughs> yeah. Right. Everybody on Cutthroat Island in Die Hard 2. <laughs> <laughs> His career is just yeah. uh, nothing anyway. Well, oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he, he I probably think, has had to come back. I swear I think he did like some of those uh, Magnum P.I. TV episodes that might have came out. <laughs> Starry dude who was in Hostel. So, <laughs> let's bring that back around. So, yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, that was that was a, a lot of that's definitely going on. Yeah, we're, we're we're probably not. You're probably not even doing screen anymore. This video is off the rails. So if you're still with us after that crooked little, oh, you no. see it happening, right? Yeah. <laughs> you just wait for it. Okay. <laughs> that's so, pretty good. So it happens. It's gonna happen. Yeah, so we're gonna have a big f section in there where they're just looking at my left hit and all my garbage. Probably my paper full of resin over here. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, that had to be. Oh, nice. We'll see. This will be a fun video. Ultimate answer, like green, green inferno. Uh, That's not so bad. There. Good idea. Poor. It was a poor execute. Poor serving of cannibalism. Because I, I expected more cannibalism. Probably got more cannibalism in the uh, One Direction version of the Jeffrey Dahmer movie. Was it? <laughs> Who was in that? Was it a One Direction guy? Who was in Jeff? Was Jeffrey Dahmer? The, the new one. There was a Dahmer. My friend Dahmer. But one um, of the stars was like some fucking Harry Styles in it or something. Something like that. Uh, these kids today. <laughs> Give me a good Larry Cohen movie. Yeah, uh, I remember enjoying it more, but I also have bad taste. So there's that. Yeah. Uh, well, you saw in the theater. You like Eli Roth. I saw. I haven't even seen Hostel. Oh, really? Okay. Once I had kids, horror movies start changing for me. I'm like, oh! Because I have a daughter, so if you would have had like, an old daughter, you you immediately oh, go, there's oh, this, there's this gonna lady, get her forever. Uh, Ashley Robbins in Hostel 2. She's done like a bunch of like softcore porn. She's so fucking hot. Nice. So Ashley Robbins, check. Hostel 2. Like, here's her IMBD list? Yeah, yeah. Don't. I mean, you can watch Hostel 2, but just watch her other stuff. And primo. There you go. I don't know too. what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> what it means is you don't see no <laughs> shafts. Don't shrink it. Yeah. Yeah. Clitoris, this big. Yeah. No shaft, no shaft spots in the movie. It's, <laughs> it is yeah. squeaky be clean, right? <laughs> softcore. I can't even imagine why you'd make a softcore porn movie. And you, no, is it, you can watch two girls eating shit on, on the computer, but people are going to make fake porns? Yeah, I, I, I mean... mean her, just her, she just has a lot of like lesbian stuff or something. I mean, it's it's hardcore, but I mean, it's not. That's like, probably what Eli Roth needs to do next. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, stylistically, there's not much there. I think he's fine doing what he's doing. What's his What's his last project? Wasn't he like a host for a TV uh, show? It's the kids movie, the Halloween kids movie with Jack Black. Goosebumps. The house no. the wall, the yes, the, the house of the clock and its walls. That's actually Eli Roth, and it's not. Oh, shit. It's not bad. It's actually it's Eli Roth stretching his wings a lot, uh, a lot more emotion, actual character arc, stuff like that. Of course, I don't think he wrote it. Reaching out from like um, I'm not like Kevin Smith. It's a little bit scarier movies. than the normal kids horror movie, which is nice, but only a little bit. It just gets a little bit gory, a little bit scarier. It's what I like. I like in the '80s. I loved it to have some actual scare in a kid's mm -hmm. movie. Like, just even in a normal kid's movie, like E.T., that had scary moments with the Reese's Pieces and the, the cornfield and stuff. Or even Monster at the Squad. end. Yeah, Monster Squad. Uh, I liked actual genuine scariness Water in kid's down, films. Though. And <laughs> that's what it made me think of Eli Roth. And I think Eli Roth is going to have a very successful um, second half of his career, I would say. Because if he I starts... I think also it's he's, like his kids movie. I think also he just just not sure what to do what what to do next, and just and wants he made to a movie where he ate people. What's the next step of? I think he's he he's done a horses. lot of what he's wanted to do horror wise, and now he's just kind of in a way doing it for a paycheck, uh, just learning his craft a little better if that makes sense. Just having fun because it did look like he had fun with the House of the Clock and his walls. It was not paint by numbers. When you're in your twenties, uh, I could see the I'm the new master of horror yeah. gore being a cool title. Then you're like in your mid thirties, early forties, and you're like, ah, I gotta pay. Well, you know, he's, he's also he's done. I think a lot master. of what he's wanted to do. I mean, if you if you've done so, you know, x amount of movies and most of the concepts that are stirring in your head, if you've done them all, then after that, you're just kind of making shit up. And I'm I'm okay with him doing other films. Um, That's where I think uh, Quentin Tarantino is now. Yeah, and he's in the Eli Roth camp. They kind of make yeah. films the same way. That's why he's doing that in a Star Trek movie. Mm -hmm. He's like, I can't write my own shit anymore. I'm bored. Yeah. I mean, and I'm really, I don't know if I'm curious to see how many times he can drop the N-bomb in a Star Trek movie. Whew. 
But I feel like it's like, in the future, we use this word for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, no, quit your cheetah, not star, not star. We don't call this synth the hole anymore. We call it synth today. Yeah. <laughs> Tarantino. <laughs> that's, that's just what they call a, a... When I was 16, he was the coolest. But so was Nine Inch Nails. And <laughs> now that I'm an adult, I realize Nine Inch Nails was what the, what they the call anthem the... of all of the incels. <laughs> what are the, the bad guys with the... in in Star Trek? Klingons? Klingons. They'll just call them the N-words. Just, that's just <laughs> gonna be the new name for them now. Just straight up. There's not gonna be no subtlety. I don't know. He will. He's just be like, Have you seen the new Star Trek show? I don't know, but I've uh, I've heard bad things. It's like a secret war. It's okay. it's literally like this captain's throwing out the prime directive and going like, how can we secretly mm. fight war with the Klingons? Which was the whole s- plot of a uh, con, kind of, yeah. Because that was what he was doing, Peter Weller, Robocops. Mm. When they had like his daughter in the movie, for, like so she could do the absolutely for no reason gratuitous strip down scene. I'm like, that's all I remember is like, hey, what's our medical officer getting out in her bra for in front of everybody? She has daddy issues, is what it turns out. Okay, well, I think we got a good footage here. All right. Uh, we'll Don't cancel out. CBS X, All Access just yet. Definitely cancel DC Direct after them dumping Swamp Thing after yeah. one episode. Fuck you, DC Direct. I'm going to get a subscription to CBS All Access here in about a week. Yeah, I'll give you the you login. See. We can probably do a quick review of maybe Twilight Zone or something. We might. We could check those out. I'll see what's on the service, and we can make the mm. camera out something. They're remakes of all the old episodes, right? But with a high heavy-handed. No I have no idea. Well, let's check them out. Jordan Peele, right? He's a pretty, pretty well, yeah. <laughs> the, the old uh, Twilight Zone wasn't exactly light touch. Yeah, no. Australia, <laughs> you motherfucking fascist. <laughs> Smoke a cigarette, you piece of shit. <laughs> You're gonna let these. <laughs> Whoa, raw. Take it easy. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. Cool. Oh.